Hi everyone, welcome back to another CreateTap tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to skim through some of the um, project settings within Nuke, what they mean, what they do, etc. Now I've already got a video that goes through in depth about the project directory and I've already got a video which goes through the proxy settings in scale. So I'm just going to go through the other ones. I will if you want, I will link the videos to the proxy settings and project directory videos. I just wanted to keep them separate to make the videos not too long. So first of all, to get to your project settings when you open up Nuke, two ways. If you hit S on the keyboard when your mouse is down the bottom in here, uh, you'll get project settings. If you hit S when your, key, when your mouse is up here, you will get viewer settings, okay? So just make sure that your mouse is in this bottom node craft bit and you've got your project settings. You can also go to the edit toolbar and go to project settings down here and it'll do the same thing. Now, first of all, you've got name. This one should be pretty simple. So if I call this um, shot underscore zero one, for example, and click off, you'll notice now that up the top, my file is called shot one. And if I go to save it, save comp, um, file save comp as, sorry. Um, what I can do is I can dictate where I want to save it, but you've already got shot one in there, okay? Basically naming your shot, really, really simple. Um, just to skim through, project directory, that's where you can dictate where your folders are so it so Nuke knows where to save and where to open all your images, your renders, your footage, etc. from. Let's just get rid of that. Um, so I do go through in another video this in more depth, okay? Comment box. This can be really useful if you're working in a team or if you're sending your work to a superior, a team leader, a lecturer, anything like that, or a friend to check over. You can put in the comment box, please um, don't alter, um, please check Roto node 3, for example. So you can literally put comments on there. It doesn't affect any of your work, it doesn't affect the quality of anything like that, so don't worry. You can also click lock all connections. So if you do this, when you send your file to somebody, they won't, let's make a few nodes, for example. So let's have a merge node, roto node, and a grade node, okay? So I can move these around. Let's just bring this back to one. Okay, and I'll go back to the project settings by hitting S on my keyboard. If I click lock all connections, You'll see that I can move these, but I can't. I can't disconnect them. I can't disconnect these arrows, and the arrows have gone white. So you can save this now and send it to someone, and they can move things like that, but they can't disconnect anything. Okay, they can't do anything within the. Um, well, they can do stuff within the nodes, but they can't actually disconnect and break those connections. Hence, why it's called lock all connections. If I turn this off, you can now unlink. Uh, if I turn it on. You can't, you can't drag these pipes, okay? So that's what Lock Connections does. Let's just delete them. Um, you've also got frame range. So essentially, think back to After Effects, it's the length of your composition, but we work in frames only here. Um, so you've got one to 100 frames. If I turn this to 150 and hit Enter, you'll notice our timeline is now one to 150. If I make this 500, You'll notice our timeline is now one all the way to 500. Pretty simple, yeah, good. Um, frames per second, FPS. Now I work in PAL, I'm in the UK, so I will normally, unless dictated otherwise by an artist or a project, I will normally work 25 frames per second at PAL, okay? If I'm working on a project which uh, is work, which the whole project's working in 24 frames, or 30, for example, then of course I'll make sure that that matches up. Um, but that's basically where you save it. It's very similar to After Effects as well. Full size format. Again, if you're coming from After Effects, this is in your composition settings. It's what actual file, what, what's, what's, the, what's the resolution? So by default, I think I accidentally just changed it to us. Go back, oh, no, not that one, Control-Z, yeah. It's set to 2K, super 35 full aperture, which is 2048 pixels by 1556. So you can basically change this in here. You'll wanna make sure you do this because any nodes that you, some, some, some other nodes that you create, um, they default to whatever your project settings are. So I'll illustrate that. If I change this to 19, HD, 1920 by 1080, if I now make a color bars, okay, color bars node, connect that up, that node is created at this resolution, 1920 by 1080, okay? So if I delete this, go back to my project settings, 
let's set it to um, let's set it to Ultra HD 4K. If I now make a color bars, that's coming in at the same resolution, okay? And you can see that up here. When I go into the node, it's saying format. What format do you want me to come in as? And it's selecting 3840 by 2160. If we go to our project settings, that's exactly what we're coming in as. So coming into here, you can see that the format is coming in. When it says root format, that's basically root means it's taking it there from the root of your project settings. So, um, like I said, I go through proxy mode, proxy scale, read through proxy files in a different video. Um, so that was very, very quick, but you can name your shot and it dictates your name and when you save it. Project directory is another video as well. You, you basically, you're setting up where the software needs to look at for all your footage, all your images and all that. You can leave comments if you're checking, pushing, putting this on to other artists. Um, or superiors. You can lock all the connections which locks, you know, when your nodes are connected you can't disconnect them. Set your frame range, frames per second, choose your format. Again, make sure, this is really important, make sure you do dictate this because if you generate, a, make a roto node and start rotoing when you're foot at the wrong format, when you change it later, it, it can just make things really difficult for you, okay? So yeah, before you do any project and import your footage, set all that up and you're good to go. So cheers for tuning in. I hope that really helped and I shall see you in another tutorial.